somehow I've been imagining myself wearing a bathing suit and sunglasses and lying in the sun on a beach chair. The image occurred to me earlier when I was doing the dishes and again now. As usual, I don't have much of a sense of what I want to write about this time, but something will get sorted out. The process lately has been to aim to write 3,000 words a day, and then when I pass the 10,000 or so mark, I read everything out loud and record it. I then take that footage and edit it, which takes me about two days to process. Usually it's an hour's worth of footage, and I'll keep at most 10% of what I write. There's something about being forced to work with the rough draft and to make it work and its scrappiness that appeals to me. As I go along with this process, I began to take the transcript from the videos that I put together and sequence it into a book. I'll keep going along and doing that. Maybe it could turn into something one day. I would think that moving more slowly with things would be what anyone would advise me to do, but somehow the constant pressure of it, the forcing myself to move forwards and to finish things, I still feel the need like that is the way to go. There's this feeling of not hitting my potential in life, failing to launch, as they say. What we have been talking about in therapy is my intelligence and this idea that I think I'm incredibly deficient, but perhaps my intelligence is specific. The attunement is geared towards something, and it seems it is a lot for people to be around. It seems that most people do not have the antenna for it. Just keep writing. Try to describe whatever. Don't try to be a better writer. Just write more. No other strategy than to write a lot. Write more than anyone about any stupid thing. Know that whatever you are writing, it has to come out one way or another. I'm thinking about my dad. He said that he doesn't have any hair left from the treatments. I was stuck on that image. I haven't seen him like that. I don't know when I'll be able to visit again, but it will be in the next month or so. I'm not sure exactly, once Miriam has finished her term. I will write through it, trying to find some kind of calm. I did pretty good today, but I suppose I did have some moments of intensity. I was pacing around when I was brushing my teeth last night. I noticed that the numbers on my alarm clock were jiggling up and down from the motor and the electric toothbrush. I wondered how many other people had ever noticed that happened. I've been sitting in my chair with my laptop, not really paying attention to the window, sometimes closing my eyes. My cat comes to say hello. He goes to my other computers and paws at the screen. We play with a spool of twine. I give him a couple of treats. He drinks some water and then goes off to see what else is going on in the house. I sit with my fingers on the keyboard, fiddling with the letters, without any real intention. When we were in Costco, I was using the urinal and I had a strange thought. I imagined someone coming up behind me and stabbing me in the corner of my back, below my right shoulder. I went and found Miriam. She was waiting near the front. I can't remember what she was looking at. The next day I was out walking and I was taking a photo of an alleyway. The light was shining into a triangle on the snow. As I walked towards it, I noticed that there was a door open from one of the shops. I looked in. There was only dark. I stepped through the snow until I got the frame how I wanted. As I held my camera upward, the image occurred to me similarly as it had before. I imagined some guy stabbing me again. I became distracted and had the feeling that I should pay off my credit card. I went onto my cell phone and opened the bank app. There was about $400 worth of random things. I submitted the money and put my phone away. I thought of the peanut butter sandwiches I used to eat for lunch at school when I was a kid. I thought of playing my Game Boy in the Sistine Chapel around then. I thought of the used cassette tape section of the store I worked in when I was in high school. I thought of an essay I wrote in university. I remember the professor wrote the word flippant in the margin. I hadn't intended for what I wrote to be flippant. And I remembered when Miriam and I first started dating, how she picked me up from the hospital when I was getting scoped. I talked to my dad on the phone. My mom was at my sister's house. Miriam was in a meeting as well. It was just me and him. There wasn't much to say, but it was good to be on the phone with him. The doctor was running late at Nora's appointment. I went out to the parking lot to top up our parking. It cost $4 per half an hour. I stood at the machine, punching in our license plate. The OK button wasn't working, so I had to do it twice. I noticed that I didn't imagine being stabbed then. I just paid for the parking and went back to the doctor's office. I sat to write, feeling like I didn't have much to say about anything. 
I poured myself more coffee. I took a step across the room. I thought about how I spent so much time sitting here writing and trying to articulate my inner life. It seems like I haven't been able to get things done these past few days. The shift in perspective has been a bit more of trying to understand the way my mind works, trying to follow my more true intuition rather than thinking that there is constantly something damaged or wrong with the way that I do things, that they aren't good enough or that I'm missing the point. I have to try to let go completely of the ordinary forms that are out there. The way that I've been going, it's my own way of doing things. It doesn't matter what other people are doing or what they think is right. I have to forget all of that, like really, truly forget it. Instead, continue making the things that I feel the need to make. It's completely my own orbit. I can see it in a new way now. Instead of trying to force myself into the paths of others, moving farther towards the self, moving towards who is truly there, behind everything, I'm getting there more and more. That is the goal more than anything else. There I am, hidden in the fortress. Inside, there is a Sistine Chapel mural of sorts, but it is the entire game of Zelda. Each from each frame of the entire game in sequence on the ceiling, I'm alone there. Aside from some help from a few people, I will sit and work on my story, written from that point of view, from a small point of view. I tried to be tough for all these years, I tried to make it on my own, and I learned a lot. I sorted out many things, but I could only get so far. There's a great humility that seems to have come over me, perhaps due to the failure that I laid out onto the ground. They're like limestone filling the space between the bricks. I'm writing some kind of strange metaphor, something about how I feel like I've changed, like I've pulled on some thread that has taken me somewhere I couldn't have anticipated. This understanding I have, that I am not alone, that I have myself, and that dialogue between myself is what it is. It was correct all along. It is as correct now as it will ever be. It is true that I may have a brain that is entirely unique, one that is unlike that of any other brain in the world. And that mind, that way of seeing the world, it does not fit into what is out there. It takes its own path. It creates its own way. Not to achieve greatness necessarily, not to prosper, not to win, but to survive. If writing is not about survival, if it is not being done as a necessity to get by, well then I don't know what the point of it is. If it doesn't need to be done, then do something else. Do something that has to get done. Something that if you don't do, you'll feel like you wasted your time. That you wasted your chance to be yourself. That is how it feels for me to write and to work on these kinds of projects. It's just what I had to do. And so I sit here, hardly looking out the window, remembering vaguely when the internet repair tech was over this morning, showing me the mess of wires that tangled around the telephone pole in the neighbor's backyard. He tried to explain to me what was going on with all of it. I nodded my head and made it seem like I understood, but I didn't really know what the fuck he was talking about. I look over at the telephone pole now, how many technicians had looked at it, pulling a line to each house so that we could all have our internet, so we could get our YouTube videos and look up stuff on Wikipedia and do whatever else we wanted. I typed some lines about the way that the sun looks behind all the clouds, but I deleted them. It seemed like there was some irony in the laziness of the way that I was writing about it, like I was trying to be too colloquial in a way that's reactionary to how I think things are supposed to be written. I could recognize the times where I write like that, but I will put it behind myself. It is untrue. It is considering too deeply what other people think. It is a learned behavior, not an intrinsic one on my behalf. It is self-conscious, and that is no way to write. To write in a way that is severely genuine, that is what I owe to myself. Sometimes it is easy to do. If I create openings to let it happen, it comes as it does, and sometimes it can be forced. If I just keep sitting and keep trying to type things, whittling sticks together, trying to get a spark, it works sometimes. And the truth is, I like the whittling. I like trying to force something to come up. I enjoy the challenge of white-knuckling all my efforts towards forcing the words to the surface. I would say that all of my favorite things that I've written have come that way, not from waiting. I don't think that waiting around for things to come is a good way to go. 
I think that we should make it happen with all that we have. I'm trying to remember what I was thinking about when I was walking back home today. I was getting fitted for a suit for my friend's wedding. I walked past some smoke shop that had a massive animal painted in the window. It might have been an owl. I can't remember exactly. That is where I am now, I suppose. Going off of that last video, figuring out how to find my footing on this one, how to find my sense of self after the ego death of that last one, that I have found myself in a place where, in the book I was reading yesterday, they were talking about how the word autism came back from the Greek auto, meaning self, one's own, by oneself, of oneself, and ism. I feel like I'm entirely unqualified to take this thing on, but there's something about that that is fascinating to me, to attribute those things with one another, what it means to be an individual, how difficult it can be to simultaneously be yourself and find some sense of belonging. The systems that are required to maintain that autonomy is for those whose minds work differently enough from the average person that they have to be seen as singular. Do they become diagnosed idiots or the opposite? Are they seen as genius or some mix of both? This area to me feels important. I suppose that's part of this issue of aloneness, the connection between those things. I'm trying to follow that thread. How I will want it to work from now onwards. How I want the overall thing to feel. I suppose that is the urge or the craving to put something together. Some offering that is able to represent the way that I want things to be now. To wipe out everything that I've done beforehand. To have a fresh start. To create some kind of image that feels correct to the way things are now. I imagine for some reason a black background with a strange cube drawn in the middle of it. Somehow that image is in my mind and it seems correct. It seems like it is representative of something I can't explain exactly, but the idea of it offers some kind of settling feeling, some kind of relief from the discomfort and anxiety and laziness that I'm pawing at as I sit in my usual chair, Something, sometimes looking at the telephone pole outside, the one all the wires lead to. The detail of that telephone pole with the hundreds of cables that run off of it, how I'm looking outward to it is irrelevant, but still it is in my thoughts and it seems like there may be some meaning to take from it, the ways of looking at it, understanding what it is. I see the tree next to it, its pine needles shaped as they are, the tree slightly in front of that one. It has no leaves at all, but the telephone pole, if I can even call it that, it is an old tree stump planted into the ground to gather wires. I thought that by writing a posting things online that there might be some way of connecting with people, but it doesn't feel that way. It doesn't seem like people are able to respond to what I'm doing in a way that is meaningful to me. I thought that I would be able to gain some momentum to find an audience or something like that, but that has been difficult. It seems that this system I've chosen of posting on YouTube is not working as well as I'd hoped. Still, I will continue along the path to drag myself through, and it seems that if I write enough, that if I post enough, then with each iteration, I will become more similar to myself and less what I think I am supposed to be, and as a result, I have to become comfortable with the lack of response that I am able to get from posting as I have been. Instead, I have to respond to myself. It is strange to feel isolated from all of the people that you know and the people you have known. I'm reminded of our friend. She has been dating someone new. They were doing something, looking at trees on a hike, but she didn't want to take pictures or videos for her TikTok around him because she wasn't ready to show him her acoustic side, as she put it. It is a way of saying autistic. The connection between the two things, I thought, was to be noted, and that all my, in that my life is all based around acoustic activities like taking videos of things and writing and putting them together. There is something about the etymology of the word autistic and that aloneness and the way the self has run so rampantly out of control on the internet and the way that she put it. I have the sense that there is some truth to it all. I look at the telephone pole, all the internet lines that are attached to it. It is just a mess of wires. I'm surprised we don't decorate those poles, that we don't build them into big religious monuments, that we don't build a fortress around it all. 
Instead, the source of our internet, the resource that seemingly has become more sacred than water, the lines are tangled in a rat's nest that's hung up on a dead tree. It is a stretch to compare all of these thoughts between those of us who seem to have some inclination of articulating and sharing our inner world through this technology, thinking that somehow we will be able to find our place in the world with the right post, with the right sacrificial offering, that something will happen. It is a strange casino, but I am there, sitting at a slot machine near the window with my bucket of coins. How much integrity can our faith possibly have praying to these internet cables? They are the threads that support our tabernacle there to be seen, to prosper, to be accepted to some acceptable degree. My therapist told me that she has no reason to lie to me, that she takes pride in telling the truth. It's part of her job. That got through to me. It's true. Why would she make something like that up? I'll continue to try and work on understanding that perspective, that I'm not an idiot, that there is some value to what I have to say. As I sit with Nora, she holds her book up by the page. It dangles like a limp rabbit she's hunted from the woods. She slams it down and then waves at me, her hand flailing back and forth. I think that maybe with enough persistence, with enough force, that maybe I can beat this thing.